you hear me? Uh, yep. Okay, no. uh, unmute myself. And... Right. So I need a photo. <laughs> All right, uh, this is my messy shed. And uh, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of telescopic equipment to move and it's a pain to set it up and take it apart every time I wanna use it. So I've made what I call a heavy duty T transportation system. And uh, so if you can go to the second photo, Bruce. Now you can see I use heavy duty wheels I uh, used some plywood and two by sixes to make it solid. And I had some old shelving bracket that I cut up and modified to hold the uh, tripod in place. Uh, I can adjust the, the, the tripod and I can move these uh, pins that I made uh, to keep everything nice and uh, tight. And I mark the ground, as you know, with the little X's to, uh, so as I don't have to uh, pull or align it every time I tow it out. I just tow it to the marks and then I have some blocks in that for the wheels to keep everything steady. So we can go to the next uh, photo. Now I have a, what is called a Celestron computerized mount and the telescope is a star bright 11 inch XLT Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And the advantage to have that, of having that is that uh, I've only got two feet of tube uh, as opposed to a Newtonian where I'd have about five feet of uh, tube to uh, haul around. So it's, uh, it's compacted. And you can see I have a Tellurad as well as a normal spotting scope on it. I like to use the Tellurad because uh, I know the night sky and I can have both eyes open and find the objects that I'm, uh, make sure that objects that I'm looking for, I can uh, be on them. That's the thing about the computerized when they, unlike the Daub, you know, you, uh, I have to find everything myself with uh, the other system. Anyhow, we can go to the next photo. And as you can see now, that's quite a bit of equipment to set up and take apart every time I want to use it. I have a CGEM mount, a Celestron CGEM computerized mount, and I have a Celestron 12 volt lithium ion power tank to uh, run the system. And uh, surprisingly, that little power tank has as much power as uh, it's a giant 12 volt battery. They're very efficient and uh, holds a charge for quite a long time. Uh, we can go to the next photo, Bruce. Uh, that's just a, the other side. You can see how much equipment there is. I've got big heavy counterweights. It's a big heavy tripod uh, and a, a fairly heavy te telescope. So it's a lot of work to set it up and take it apart every time you wanna go out. So with this, uh, having this uh, transporter that I made up, uh, I can move it pretty quickly in and out of the shed. So uh, it's, it's pretty handy. I can be set up uh, and looking at the stars within about five minutes. Uh, anyhow, we can go to the next one, Bruce. And that's me. <laughs> I was working in the yard and I, shot these photos and that's what I do, drag it with the chain in and out of the shed. So pretty much that's it, my transporter and that's my equipment, uh, one of my five or six telescopes. And uh, hopefully uh, we get some nice nights now and we can be out a bit more. So that's it. So Danny. Yes. Uh, I take your shed's heated then? I mean, I, I know the, the complications that we have with you know, the, um, the observatory up by the airport. Do you have similar problems like that with your scope? No, what I do is in the shed, if you go to the first photo again, Bruce, my shed, I made, this is uh, my plywood shed I made up from uh, all this material from the drop. I keep in all my sheds, I, I've got a red uh, heat lamp and, and I keep a heat lamp or a light bulb going 24 seven. It's cheaper to, 
uh, pay for the electricity for a heat lamp and I never get mold or mildew or anything on any of the tools or equipment. It always stays really good. And like even my camper or my big trailer or everything, always keep the fan running and keep the air circulating. Then you never get mold or mildew. But I have no problem, we keep the heat lamp on at all times. It just has enough heat to keep, uh, keep it uh, nice and dry. And uh, that's that's about it. Uh, Danny, uh, there's a question for heat lab, How many watts is it? Oh, I can't tell you that. Because I've heard that even like a 25 watt light bulb, you know. Oh, uh, oh, the heat lab. It's one of those ones that you buy for a restaurant to have. And uh, what I do is I made up uh, one of those uh, one gallon cans, and I made a it, like a little mini furnace. I have a fixture at the bottom of the can on a piece of plywood and uh, it runs 24 seven. So it's like a tiny heater. It's okay. one of those restaurant uh, 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 heater. So it's probably at least hundred watts or 150 watts. So if, you're, if your shed doors are closed and you walk in there on a cold day, is it warm inside? It's not cold inside. It's just keeps it just uh, reasonable. But I've heard if you're even one degree above ambient temperature, that'll get rid of condensation. So like even like a, a 25 watt light bulb may be all you need. Yeah, it's possible. I have, uh, I have, uh, uh, I think 40 watt in two of my sheds. I, even my wood shed, I've got about, and I've got a couple trailers, like a, a big tow trailer and a camper. And I just keep a light bulb on in all of them and uh, a small fan circulating so, the air. So none of those, you don't get condensation or mold or- Nothing. Any can, can, can I add a comment uh, here, Danny? Yeah. Um, in my uh, former observatory, I had a, sh a shroud, like a barbecue cover that was sitting over the scope. Um, and underneath that, there was an 11 watt heater. Yeah. It was 11 watts and it ran 24 seven, um, never any problems. Yeah. All, all you have to do is suppress the dew point, but yeah. any, no matter what the atmospheric conditions, if you can suppress the dew point by a small amount, you'll be safely below the point where any condensation can form. Yeah. That's how the dew control works up at the airport as well. So yeah. we use it under the shroud. Yeah, see, I uh, with this shed, I've been in and out of it all winter, all the time. I keep uh, different tools in that, so I'm constantly opening the door and letting stuff in. So uh, I do keep the telescope shrouded with a silver. I've got this silver foil type of a cover I have over the telescope. But with all the other tools, and I bring things out to, in and out that are wet and damp in the winter, I find that I probably a little more heat than that for that that shed but the other sheds I know I've got uh, I just got a really small light bulb in each one and it seems to work yeah I have a question uh, Danny uh, yeah. and that is um, what about uh, like the uh, you know, like the stability of the of the freedom from sort of uh, vibration uh, you know uh, do you find that having put it up on those wooden uh, struts or whatever that it tends to shake more or is it is it really solid uh i what i do is i have clamps i didn't bother putting them on but i have a clamping system that cold that holds it where i don't get any shaking or vibration i imagine if i stood on the on the, the stand or something like uh touched it i there might be a little bit of movement uh uh but I'm very careful, but there's no shake or anything. I haven't found anything. Okay. It's pretty solid. And that's a, like that motor's really a high quality, like that mount. So it's, you're not getting vibration and very much vibration or anything. It's, it's pretty smooth. Right. Um, it's just that you could see that's a lot of equipment. To, to, it takes half an hour to put it, you know, together, put it back in the box and put everything away. And then if you want to use it, you have to take everything out and put it together again. It's, it's, it, it, that's the disadvantage of these where 
uh, a Dobsonian is. So if you want to go up, observe at the airport, you throw the Dob in the back of the vehicle and you got a big scope and it's, it's a two minute setup. But this is a real pain. It's a lot of work. And you have put everything away so carefully in the cases because it's expensive equipment and it's fragile. So this is something that I wouldn't even take it to the airport unless it was say for a sky party or you know maybe Porpoise Bay, I would take it, but it's just a lot of work and a lot of trouble to pack and unpack these things. There's a disadvantage just to having these big scopes, <laughs> you know. Well, well, as they say, the 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 best one, the best scope is the one that gets used. That's and, right. And it's that this kind of a gadget is is what you need for something a setup like this. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just that, like, if I, before I had this. I would just drag the daub out. I got a, a daub, the 13 inch daub in the shed there and a couple other scopes. I just dragged them out because I'd say, ah, I just want to observe anyways. Uh, and all, but the, the other thing about this here with the, it's, it's outstanding at night because I've got a pair of bino viewers I bought from Neil Sandy that go on these and uh, it's really, really spectacular at night with this scope. So it's nice to be able to haul it out and not have to spend a whole bunch of time uh, putting it away. You know, at, at three in the morning or two in the morning, you know, you're tired and everything. And, you know, and you can't leave it out overnight because it could rain or you don't know what's going to happen that, you know, what it's like on the coast here. And uh, so this is really nice. I, it's so easy to push it in and out. And uh, I'm, I, so now I use it a lot more. And uh, it's nice because it, it, let's face it, it's pretty good image with these. Question, Dan. Yeah. Are those solid tires? No, they have air in them. I got them from my brother. The, the, uh, they've got air in them. They're okay. not solid. But I've got blocks that I, you know, to, to stiffen up the, the stand. It's just I don't bother with it just to take photos of it for this presentation. But I do have clamps and everything to hold everything tight. So it doesn't matter if the if it's air in the wheels or solid. But I got my brother gave me I've got another three or four of these wheels. He had a ton of them. He worked for the city of Thunder Bay. So he, he was a, <laughs> he, you know, a city employee. He had access to everything. <laughs> I don't know where he got all the wheels, but I was glad I got some. <laughs> we try to family tradition. Try not to pay for anything if you can scrounge it up. <laughs> so, anyways, it works good. The wheels in the back are are straight, and the front wheel turns. Say it's got bearings, yep. so I can steer it around. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, I like to make stuff. You know, we're astronomers. We're the kind of people we like to fidget, eh? we can make something instead of buying it, why not? And the price of these things, there's about four or 500 bucks to buy one of these stands. That's why yep. I, I decided to make it. I priced it out and, and uh, looked around. And I thought, no way I'm paying that kind of money. No way. I mean, I'm kind of surprised, Dan, with all those casters you've got, you didn't just jack it up and put wheels under the shed. Yeah, well, that's an idea too. Slide the whole shed <laughs> off the telescope. If I, if I had made another shed, I just I just made a really nice greenhouse for my wife. So now there's another shed. And if you, you notice in the photos to the side there, there's I've got stuff where I'm working outside all over the place. Um, I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's crazy. I got shed-itis. <laughs> I'd like <laughs> to make myself an observatory. I've even thought of putting one on the roof of the house, but... Uh, I don't know. That could get me in big trouble. But anyhow, uh, house shifts this, too much. This works really well. This works really well. It does. So, and it's it's the cheapest way to for fast transportation. You can pull it anywhere in the yard if you want to go further out or whatever. It's it works, which is all we want, eh? If it works, it's great. Happy to see you haven't put a trailer hitch on it. Yeah, that is, that is that. I've thought about how can I pull it onto the trailer 
and hold it tight enough where it doesn't fall over. Just take the whole rig up to the airport. <laughs> there, but, used, uh, there used to be a guy in the Calgary Center. Uh, I saw him at a couple of star parties there. Um, and Don Haladiak knows him. This guy had a 22 inch Casa Green mounted on a boat trailer. <laughs> It looked like something out of Star Wars. Well, there was a guy up at uh, Mount Kobai when we had that big fire, and he had he was from Calgary, and he had like a, I don't know, twenty five inch or something scope he built, and and the the trailer at the scope was a trailer, the whole thing was built into it. Yeah. And then when we had the fire on Mount Kobai, it was all that. Uh, it was really rough. The road that road going up there was. Uh, it was terrible. It was uh, with the ruts, and we had this big fire, and he could only go about five miles an hour because he was scared of, uh, you know, wrecking Losing the mirror. Might have been and, the same guy. And I had, I went back up, and I, I told him, I said, I've just got notice from down below because I went back up and, I, and got all Neil's eyepieces and everything. He forgot them in the, he left them in his tent. So I passed the guy going back up to get stuff and I told them they warned us down below you got we only had a, a few you know maybe half an hour to get off that mountain and it turned out as I was the last off or second last off and uh, the flames jumped the road just at that minute so 10 minutes later we'd been cooked you know so <laughs> but yeah that was that was really an experience that one scary scary but uh yeah there there was oh bill bergier uh bill who is a member of the res center he uh i think he used to, he brought that huge telescope of his over from vancouver and it was on a on a trailer mounted anyhow i guess we're finished here eh <laughs>